Well hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters and my ham radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. Over the last few months I've had quite a few inquiries about vertical antennas and all sorts of aspects of vertical antennas have been the subject of the correspondence. Uh, will this vertical antenna be good? Um, will it fit into my garden? How will it work? Etc. Etc. And I thought the best way really to answer all these various inquiries is to sort of perhaps embrace it into a single video. Now I've been licensed for over 60 years now and I think during the whole of my ham radio life I've almost always had a vertical some form or other in the various gardens that I've uh, occupied <laughs> during that uh, 60 year career. Some have been larger gardens, some have been smaller gardens but I've always had a vertical and I think what originally attracted me to the vertical was its simplicity particularly when I was first licensed and when I was first licensed I got attracted to verticals because they were known as DX antennas and it seemed to be a, to me a simple way of installing an aerial into a fairly small garden and that would enable me to work DX because that's what it said on the package DX antenna well, in more recent years, uh, and certainly in videos over the last couple of years, I have mentioned on the odd occasion that a DX antenna is only a DX antenna if it's used in the correct way. And there are many, many antennas that are capable of DX, but they only work DX if they're installed in the correct way and in the correct situation. There are many examples where a DX antenna, or so-called DX antenna, won't actually work as well as it says on the packet. And again, when I was first licensed, I thought, oh, I'll get a Yagi antenna, because that's a DX antenna. And I think I installed it at about 15 foot above the ground in the sort of belief that I was going to work DX. Well, of course, once I knew a bit more about radio, I realised that uh, a Yagi at sort of 15 foot above the ground is no better than a dipole at 20 or 25 feet. So when we talk about DX antennas, you have to qualify it. But I can see the attraction of a vertical antenna because again, when I was first licensed, I had a small garden and I thought, well, a vertical antenna is the obvious way to go because I don't need supporting moss at either end of the garden. I can just put up this vertical antenna in the middle of the small grass patch I had, which was called a garden, and I'll work DX. And that's what I did. And of course, at that time, I had nothing to compare with. So I was reasonably happy with the results I got. But as time went on, I started to appreciate antennas and the results that I was getting were perhaps not what I should be getting. So let's talk about vertical antennas and see if I can, in the space of 10 or 15 minutes, cover my experience and give enough information so that you can make your own choice. Now for the purpose of this discussion on vertical antennas, I'm going to restrict it to the quarter wave vertical because the quarter wave vertical is by far and away the most popular antenna. And it can come in well, three basic flavours. You can have a monoband vertical antenna, which, as the name suggests, just covers one band. You can have a trapped antenna, which again is a series of quarter wave antennas using the trap principle to uh, give you multi band operation. Or you can have a series of vertical uh, elements placed fairly close together, which again gives you the advantage of covering several bands. The vertical antenna has fairly low impedance. The impedance at the feed point is around about 20-25 ohms. But if you install a vertical antenna in your suburban garden, connect a bit of coax to it, you'll probably be quite surprised that you actually get a good match. Now, one of the reasons you get a good match is because there is there are earth losses in a typical suburban garden installation and those earth losses are in series with the feed uh, impedance and so the, that it effectively raises the impedance of the antenna so you get a fairly good match and it's probably one of the rare occasions when 
a reduction uh, in VSWR actually doesn't equate to the best performance because if you can improve the uh, ground plane, the earth uh, plane um, around the base of the antenna, what you actually do is you reduce the ground loss and reducing the ground loss actually raises the VSWR slightly but you shouldn't worry about that because the efficiency of the antenna system is improved. So we've got our vertical antenna. Now we're, we're, we're taught that a series of radials is essential. We know that. That's, that's basically antenna theory. And if you put a, a, a series of radials out on the ground or just below the surface, you reduce the, 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 the ground loss, ground resistance, and you improve the reflectivity of the area around the base of the antenna, which all sounds good and it works pretty well. We are also taught that we should have quarter wave radials. Well, that's really a bit of a nonsense because what is a quarter wave on the ground? Well, a quarter wave on the ground is nothing like a quarter wave in the air. And basically, we've now found out in recent times that it's not so much the length of the radial as, as it is the number of radials. So if, for example, you have, let's say you have a, I don't know, a 20 meter vertical, which a quarter wave is going to be five meters high. And you put out a series of radials. You could put out a series of five meter radials on the ground and you get reasonable performance. But you could double the number of radials and half the length. So perhaps you had two and a half meter radials, but you had a lot more. You probably find that you got a very similar performance. So our basic quarter wave vertical is a quarter wave in the air and a series of radials on the ground, ground level, and it works pretty well because many of you will have used that antenna as I have done in the past and been pretty happy with the results. So let's now talk about multiband in the vertical. If you put a series of traps in a vertical, you can make it cover several bands. Uh, my first antenna was a high gain 12 AVQ, which covered three bands. My next antenna was a Hustler. 4BTV, which covered four bands. It covered 10, 15, 20, and 40 meters. Okay, it worked pretty well. The only problem with um, a trap vertical is that the bandwidth tends to be narrower as you progress lower in frequency. So, for example, a, on 20 meters, the bandwidth on a Hustler 4B TV would be slightly narrower than what it would be if it was a full size vertical. That's the penalty you pay with trapped antennas. Does it affect the efficiency? Well, I don't think it does. I think any, any loss of efficiency in a trapped vertical is very, very small indeed. And my experience is the penalty is more in bandwidth. But really and truly, even with a slightly narrower bandwidth, it's for, for, you can sort of tolerate it. And a Hustler 4B TV will cover most of 20 metres and certainly cover most of the phone band. So it's not really too much of a penalty. So what about the antenna that uses a series of vertical elements? Well, here you have uh, a mechanical problem. First of all, if you've got a series of vertical elements, then you need some way of supporting them and the classic way of supporting them at the moment is with a fiberglass pole. Nothing wrong with that. You have the uh, fiberglass pole erected vertically and you've got a series of vertical elements around the perimeter of that fiberglass pole. Now there is some interaction between those elements, that's, that's inevitable, and therefore you need to adjust the length of those elements to compensate. So it can be a bit of a bit of a conundrum to try and get the lengths right, but ultimately you will get the lengths right. The other problem, of course, is support. Because you've got these elements around a fiberglass pole, you need to support that pole. And the problem is that the only real way to support a fiberglass pole is either to guy it, which is okay, except that it takes up room on the small garden lawn, lawn or to use a wooden post because you can't use a metal post to support a fiberglass pole because that will interfere with the elements. So if you're going to use a fiberglass pole, 
you do need either to guy it, which in a small garden can be a bit of a problem, or you need to attach it to a wooden support point, which I've done in the past and it works quite well. But as time went on, I began to realise that I wasn't getting the performance that I had hoped for using a vertical antenna, ground mounted. And thinking back, when I was first operating with a vertical, I used the high gain tour of AVQ, but it wasn't on the ground, it was up in the air. And this really is one of the current problems we have with vertical antennas. For some reason or other, and I can understand um, some of the reasons, is that we tend to ground mount our verticals now because it's easy. It's the easy way to go, particularly if you've got a small garden. The problem is that if you mount an antenna at ground level, you've got a few problems. And one of the basic problems is in a small garden, you're surrounded by all sorts of objects which would obscure and absorb the energy. And what that actually means is that the low angle radiation that you can get from a vertical is absorbed by various objects. You've only got to, if you lay it on the ground in your garden and looked up at an angle of five degrees, which is quite a narrow angle actually, you'd be surprised at how little amount of sky you could see. I mean, your own house would be in the way, next door's house on either side would be in the way, the house at the bottom of the garden would be in the way, those houses are festooned with wire, you've got shrubs, you've got trees, you've got lampposts, all these obscure the low angle radiation. And another factor that comes into play is what is called the Fresnel zone. Now basically the Fresnel zone is a critical zone around the base of your antenna which extends for several wavelengths from the base of the antenna. And that zone determines how well your antenna works. Now I'm not going to go into the details of it but basically be aware that there's a Fresnel zone and for several wavelengths out, it affects the performance of your antenna, particularly when it's mounted at ground level. And because the Fresnel zone is measured in wavelengths, it means to say that the lower in frequency you go, the longer the Fresnel zone is. And therefore, the problem arises that it's not only your neighbour's houses, but it's other houses further away, lampposts further away, trees, shrubs. Um, telegraph poles, anything that is likely to be in the way at several wavelengths along is going to affect the performance of your antenna. So I found that basically a vertical antenna tends to work better at the higher frequencies. A vertical antenna in a suburb, suburban garden, ground mounted, um, operating on 10 metres and 12 metres and even 15 metres works quite well. But when you start to go up to 20 metres, then the performance tends to die off. And you'd be quite surprised if you were to do an A-B test between a 20 metre vertical and a dipole, say, at 25 feet high. What is that in metres? Um, 8 metres high? So if you do an A-B test in your back garden with a dipole that's 8 metres above ground, and a vertical that is ground mounted, even with a good radial system, you'll probably find that the dipole tends to work better, which is quite surprising. But of course, if you've got nothing to compare it with, you'd probably be quite happy with the 20 meter performance. But you do need to be aware that that performance is not as good as you might expect. And again, do remember that I'm talking about the typical suburban garden. Now, if you were to mount your vertical in the middle of a field, then the performance would be totally different. You'd be in the perfect location. And that's why DXs, top DXs on the expedition still use verticals, because they have the advantage of wide open space and the vertical can give much better performance. It gives low angle radiation and that lower angle radi radiation is not inhibited by surrounding objects. So the vertical antenna is working at a bit of a disadvantage in your typical garden situation. There's one other aspect to it as well. If we accept that 
a vertical has primarily low angle radiation. It is also somewhat restrictive if you want to operate over short distances. If you want to work sporadic E, you might have a bit of a problem. But it becomes more of a problem on the lower frequency bands. Take, for example, 40 meters. Now, 40 meters very often is good for short skip. You can have inter UK contacts or close in uh, uh, European contacts, and the signals will be very strong, but they won't be nearly as strong on your vertical because your vertical doesn't have any response or much response to high angle signals. So as you go lower in frequency, you'll find that your vertical antenna is not so good. And again, put up a vertical antenna for 40 meters and then compare it with a dipole at only about, about five or six meters above ground. You'll be quite surprised that the signals on your low dipole will be much stronger than on your vertical because the vertical is only responding to low angle signals and very often particularly um, a lot of the time during the day and sometimes at night the angle of arrival of signals is high angle and therefore your vertical is not so good so what it actually happens is that the vertical antenna is not working quite as well as you hoped for in your suburban garden and even of course in a big open field so you had a 40 meter vertical in a big open field that's not going to be as good as a low dipole for inter g contacts etc etc and it gets even worse on 80 meters on 80 meters you'll find that the vertical antenna doesn't give you nearly such a good signal as uh, a low dipole would for a majority of the contacts and finally we come back to the way that a vertical antenna is installed. If I go back to my early days of ham radio when I had the Hustler uh, 4B TV and the high gain um, 12 AVQ, they were both erected in the air on a mast with radials. We called them a ground plane. And that was the that was the accepted way of installing verticals. Installing verticals for the HF bands at ground level was only done when there was no other option. But if you put a vertical up on a mast and you have ground plane radials coming down, you only need two or three radials per band, you'll find the performance really jumps tremendously. The feed impedance becomes more, uh, more akin to 50 ohms and the performance of that vertical works so much, so much better if you get that vertical above ground. Now, there is a halfway point. You can actually get your vertical, say, three or four foot above the ground, the base three or four foot above the ground, and use radials um, above the ground instead of radials buried in the ground. That, again, will improve the performance. For whatever reason, the idea of mounting ver verticals in the air seems to have drifted, and I think it's drifted because people find it much easier, and I can understand that, to mount the antenna at ground level. If you can get that antenna off the ground, you don't need nearly so many radials, you'll get better performance, and you really will work the DX. A vertical antenna at ground level is an answer to many people, but it's not the best position for the antenna. And a vertical in a suburban garden is working at a bit of a disadvantage. But again, you may be in a situation where you've got another option. The vertical will radiate, it will work, and your workstations. But it is not working as well as it could do in the middle of a field. And in terms of lower frequency performance, you'll find that you won't get nearly such strong signals on 40 meters or 80 meters than you would with a horizontal wire. So it's horses for courses, isn't it? But what I hope I've try to impress on you is the fact that whilst the vertical antenna has got potential it doesn't reach its full potential in a suburban garden and it's probably not the best antenna for the lower frequencies but 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 if you're in a small lot you've only got a small amount of space then it's an option which will work get radials on the ground yes it will work but bear in mind that there are other ways of using a vertical antenna which will give you much better performance or in some cases 
ditch the vertical on the lower frequency bands and go for a horizontal wire. Different subject. So I hope that I've covered the topic in enough detail now to answer many of the questions that you've uh, asked and that will give you a better idea of whether the vertical antenna is what is what you want or whether you need to think about it or whether you need to install the vertical in a slightly raised position. You'll get much better performance, you don't need so many radials and uh, you'll reap the benefit. Thanks for watching this video. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.